Well, here we go, exercise three. Let's get some vocabulary down. Pre-image, I'm going to take an object and I'm going to translate it, as we've been doing all year. And then it's going to end up somewhere, and that somewhere is the image. You'll notice the blue and the red coding, and we use this consistently throughout the book. Pre-image is, well, and there's no law, but in our book it's going to be blue, and the image will be in red. Start from blue, go to red. So I can see it right there, and I can see what's happening. This is just sliding or gliding along, and um, I've got a translation vector here. Now, depending on which text you're looking at, you might just call this a translation. You might call it a, gl a glide translation, a glide transformation, or maybe a vector translation. Anything along those lines tells me that you understand that the image is just sliding over from the pre-image. It's not spinning, it's not flipping, just sliding. Well, how would you imagine getting from the blue triangle over here to the red one, the pre-image to the image? Well, it's not sliding over, it's not flipping. It looks like it's spinning around this point. Well, around this point is the origin, zero, zero, so we call that rotating about the origin. So I would look at it doing this, okay? Now, like all good mathematics, that is rotating in the counterclockwise direction, and I would call that a 90-degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin, okay? I know some of you are saying, is there another way to do it? Of course there is. There's always the short way, and there's always the long way. I could rotate the other direction and I'm sure you've figured out by now that that is a 270 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. If you had to pick one, it's a little easier to see that. I would go with this one, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Well, let's look at this transformation. I'm going to show. start first with the translation. And you can see x, y maps to negative x, comma, y. So let's take this point over here. If that's 3, 3, that would map to no, negative 3, 3, opposite of x, comma, y. So I would have this image. And you can see what's happening. I'm going to take it, and I'm going to reflect it about the y-axis. So this would be a reflection. And in this case, the y-axis is the axis of reflection. All right, a brief introduction to coordinate notation right here. Let's describe each of these, exercise 14 and 16. We'll use blue and red. We're going to stick with that throughout this book, pre-image and image. Well, there you go. X, Y, the pre-image maps to X plus 6, Y plus 3. Six units to the right and three units up. So, of course, seven units to the left, well, that seems like it's going to be in the opposite direction. And there you go, x minus 7 and y plus 9. Well, let's reflect this pre-image in blue across the x or horizontal axis. Now, you could do this man, without even taking this course, but let's be consistent here. This is, well, this is our rule. x, y maps to x opposite of y. So let's, well, let's see what that looks like. If this is the point 1, 2, which it is, then that would map over here to 1, negative 2. Again, x, y, x, negative y. Now, if this were the point 3, 1, because it is, then you'd expect that would map or flip over to here, 3, negative 1. So the rest of the figure is the same, and there you go. You're just drawing a reflection. Now that's fun. Well, 19, just like the last one, you got the same translation. Here's an example, and that's the result. Well, this is a fun and a little bit less typical exercise. Um, I'm going to assume you can do this part, which is you've got the, the four points A, B, C, D, and I've color-coded pre-image and image. Well, if it works out, that is. And I assume you can plot those, so come on, that's here. That's, that's going to be 1, 2. That's up here is 3, 4, 
2, negative 1 for Charlie and delta 4, negative 3. You can see that. Now here comes a way we can figure out if this is a valid rotation. Use your chess playing skills. Imagine, imagine this. Imagine how a knight moves, two forward, one to the side. If I were to swing this over 90 degrees clockwise, look at that. It goes from A, up two over one, two, over two, down one. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Let's see what I've got. I guess we're going to need a super chess knight here. Up four over three, I rotate this downwards. I could count over four and down three. Hey, look at that. That's also 90 degrees of rotation. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. I like that. Another thing that you can do to help you, yourself, sketch these circles. Notice A and C are on the same circle. These are circles centered at the origin. That would have to be the axis or the center of rotation. And in this case, A and C are on the same circle. B and D are on the same circle. That's a helpful hint right there. And my conclusion, that CD is indeed a 90 degrees clockwise rotation of AB. Well, this is interesting. Complete the statement here. Um, in this description that the points 0, 3, and 2, 5 are two vertices of a hexagon, absolutely useless. I don't really care what they are. I'll just, just look at the points. 0, 3 translates to 0, 0. And if we're trying to make a rule based on this, the only thing I can see is that x stays the same and y decreases by 3. That's my rule. So then when I apply this to 2, 5, well, that's pretty straightforward. 2 remains the same. 5 becomes 2. See, don't overthink it. Now let's look at this one. Again, um, 0, 3 translates to 1, 2. It looks like the x is, increase, is increasing 1 and that the y is decreasing by 1. And there you go. Hey, there's a typographical mistake. I would say 3 plus 1 would 2 plus 1 would be 3, and 5 minus 1 is 4. Well, here's three exercises where we know a point on the image, and we're going to work backwards to find the point on the pre-image. Well, if this is the translation, then, well, I could do two things. I could just set up a pair of equations. I could say since 4, 0 is the result of this translation, then x plus 2 is 4, and y minus 3 is 0. Solve for x and y, I get the point 2, 3. Or I could just ask myself, which point would I've, where would I have needed to come from? Um, or some of you just reverse the operations. You're just going to say 4 minus 2 and uh, 0 plus 3. That works as well. But this is the way I'd like you to think of it. Look at this translation. x, y maps to negative x or opposite of x comma y. Therefore, the opposite of x is negative 3. y is y or y is 5. So clearly, if the opposite of x is negative 3, then x must be 3. 3, 5 will map to negative 3, 5 with this translation. One more. All right, you're getting the pattern. How about this? x minus 7 equals 6. y minus 4 equals negative 9. Work it out. 13, negative 5. Well, let's start here with segment ST. Rotate it 90 degrees clockwise around point E. So this is a segment. Think of it as two discrete rotations. Rotate that point S 90 degrees. You can visualize it's going to end up here and point T, 90 degrees, and you should be able to visualize it's ending up there. So if I made an animation of it, it would look like this. Ready? There we go. Ta. That's the rotation, 90 degrees, and it ends up mapping to UV. So I could say that UV is the image of this rotation, and ST would be the pre-image. Well, let's rotate 
bx 90 degrees counterclockwise about point e and think of it point by point b is to the right and that should end up here above or cardinal headings east would rotate to north i can imagine x trailing behind from here over to here ready let's visualize ready i grab this thing. one two three go there it is bx rotates ah, right there to av well here we're going to take an entire triangle and we're going to rotate it 180 degrees around the point e now notice it doesn't give us a direction because it doesn't have to either way we can rotate it we're going to go in our, for our purposes counterclockwise we'll do something different this time i'm going to highlight this triangle and that I'll call this the image triangle. I'll just use the prime notation B prime, W prime, X prime to show the points or where, well, to show the movement and go part way with it. So you can see now that the B, where the B is traveling, the B is going to travel through the A, as you see there. The W passes through U. Right now at 90 degrees, X is corresponding to V. And we'll keep going, keep going. And that's where we end up. Look at those letters. It looks to me like the corresponding triangle. The B is going to match the D and the W, S, and the X will be aligned with T. So that's going to be our image triangle. And our pre-image, of course, was triangle BWX. Let's rotate another triangle 180 degrees. And just to show equal time, we'll rotate this one clockwise. Since it's all the same, we're taking this triangle, we're rotating around point E. Notice I'm using that prime notation to indicate image. So when I rotate it a little bit, you see the direction of traveling a little bit farther. Keep going. Aha. So you can see that in this case, triangle T U A would correspond to triangle X Y C.